What's up, everybody? Once again, my name is Matt, and welcome back to Let's Play Newer Super Mario Bros. DS. In the previous video, we finished off World 2, and now here we are in World 3, Dory's Island. Let's jump into the first level. I am so glad to be recording again, because man, oh man, have I been dealing with a lot of random tech issues lately, which is really unusual for me, since, you know, normally, things just sort of work, which is kind of my philosophy on technology, like... If something doesn't work, I'll just usually go with something else because if I've done my part, set everything up correctly, and troubleshooted to the best of my ability, and it's still not working, well, I would probably just like return whatever it is that's not working and get something else. I guess one downside to that is, um, I do have a lot of brand loyalty as a result, especially when it comes to computer parts. Like, I try to stick to the few brands I know make quality products or have, like, really good customer support over, like, the cheaper alternatives. On one hand, I do probably spend a little bit more than I need to, but on the other hand, I'm more confident, like, what I'm getting will be good, and, uh, should it have a problem, the return or repair process, like, will just be a lot smoother, so... You kind of have that trade-off there. Um, I am kind of getting off topic, though. Um, oh, right, so... Yeah, this series in particular has just been, like, really problematic to record, to say the least. And that's sort of why I've been a little inconsistent and missed a few days here and there. Um, one of, like, the more annoying problems I'm having is I'll record a video, and then I'll import that video clip into my editing software, and the video portion will just be completely black. Like, the audio is still there, there's just no video. But if I open that very same file in, like, a media player, I can see the video fine. So, I'm not really sure what's causing that problem. It might be my editing software. Maybe it's the way the video is getting encoded. Although, I'm not really encoding the video any different now than when I did normal new Super Mario Bros. DS. So, I don't think it's that. Um, but my solution so far has just been to, like use a conversion software to like just convert the um file to not even a different format just convert it like to another file same format uh just like a different file and for whatever reason that just works and like i can edit the video perfectly fine after that the only problem is like that adds another 30 plus minutes or whatever to the process which is really really annoying because like that's time that i didn't need to spend otherwise until this started happening so yeah i haven't really tracked that down yet um hopefully i can figure out what causes that and then you know go back to maybe making daily videos again we'll see because i'm sort of in that weird spot right now where it's like yeah i have these issues but also i'm in the process of building a new computer so do i really want to spend the time necessary to fix those problems or do I just you know wait until I get this new computer and then hope that everything just sort of works out in the end I don't know man I don't know I guess that's sort of why these problems still exist and I haven't actually fixed them yet um I've also been having like some weird issues live streaming which by the way if you don't already follow me on twitch you should totally do that I'll put a link in the description but um yeah, so I haven't really been streaming a whole lot either, um, which is in part because I'm spending more time, you know, working on the Zelda documentary, but also because the game that I wanted to stream, um, when I tried to stream it, like, the video feed on my streaming software was just completely messed up. I have no idea how to actually explain this to you guys, but I'll do my best, so... You know, normally, when you record a video, you guys see exactly what I see, like this video here. You know, the colors, everything looks identical to what I see when I'm playing. Um, well, when I loaded up uh, Fortnite, that was the game that I was going to stream because I've been playing that a bunch lately, and uh, it's a ton of fun. But uh, I loaded that up into OBS Studio, which is the software I used to stream with, and... Um, the only way I can describe what it looked like is by saying it basically looked like what would happen if your graphics card started failing. And those of you who have seen that happen know what I'm talking about. But, um, those of you who haven't seen that, um, it basically was 
all the colors were completely wrong. Like everything was a lime pink and green. There was static all over the screen, but it was only in uh, OBS. It wasn't actually displaying like that when I was playing the game. So I know it's not actually my graphics card failing on my computer. It's something to do with how OBS is capturing the game. And I'm not really sure what the deal with that is. So yeah, I kind of need to work on that and fix that. I have a theory it might be related to like a direct X issue, but um, I can't really test that because I'm still on Windows 7. And I think Windows 10 will probably fix that because it has like uh, direct X 12 support, I want to say, something like that, I don't know. There's some like weird exclusivity thing to like Windows 10 and the newest version of DirectX and I think that might fix the problem that I'm having because I'm pretty sure that's what Fortnite makes use of. But that's more of like a technical issue, I guess you could say. Other than like all those random problems, though my 2018's been going pretty swell. How is your 2018 going, guys? Like I'm actually looking forward to the rest of this year uh things are looking up you know especially over the next couple of months hopefully some things will happen that'll just be pretty fun and interesting i guess for me on a more personal level i don't really want to say too much yet since nothing is really set in stone right now but i'll let you know in the future um in general though i am optimistic about this year like i kind of want to use 2018 as a self-improvement year which i know is kind of cliche since everyone has like their new year resolutions but um i actually do want to improve both like my mental state my physical health and um just my youtube channel overall so stuff like that i'm trying to improve in uh 2018 you know like i'm working out a little bit trying to lose a little bit of weight and um in 2017, I didn't have like the best mental outlook, so I'm trying to work on changing my perspective on things. Anyways though, yeah that was a secret exit, meaning there is a normal one, so let's go and grab that. Alright, so yeah, for the normal exit, let's just like keep going through this level like we probably should have. I kind of accidentally did the secret exit first. That's because like unfortunately this game does carry over like the whole hiding star coins in the secret exits thing that the original game did. Not exactly a fan of that. How did I just go through that Koopa's head? I'm surprised like I didn't die there, but also I should have bounced directly off him. Now ah, whatever. We got the star coin and we're done with the level, baby. That's all that matters. But uh that was still kind of strange. I really wish like um they didn't hide star coins in the hidden pathways just because that's kind of annoying. I mean, no matter what, I am going to get all the secret exits anyway, so I guess for me, it doesn't particularly matter, but still, i just rather they not do that in general. Alright, let's pop this fire flower here just because probably, yeah, there's going to be another power up there, and I'd rather have two fire flowers than be baby Mario for like a majority of this level. Either way, I gotta say, I do like the theme of this mid-castle, like this whole tree trunk honeycomb thing. Reminds me a lot of, um, Super Mario Galaxy 2's, oh no, the original Super Mario Galaxy's Honey Hive Galaxy. I'm pretty sure it was in Galaxy 1, although, it might have actually also been in Galaxy 2, just set in the fall? Because I do seemingly remember, like, Honey Hive having a quote-unquote copycat galaxy where just like a couple things were changed and um the leaves were falling and like the aesthetic was you know the fall season so that was either in galaxy 2 or it was just like later on in galaxy 1 i think it might have been later on in galaxy 1 i'm not too sure either way doesn't matter because uh this sort of brought that theme back here and it fits mario pretty well it's a shame you know, we don't have the bee suit, but thankfully in this game, Mario can just climb on these honeycombs, no problem. Uh, this could be kind of tricky. Come on, Mario, please. Yeah, there we go, baby. No problem. Um, so I guess, like, the honeycombs are probably retextured, like, grates from the other castles. Also, in World 3, was this castle originally a vertical castle? I'm kind of curious. Like, I want to know how much they were actually able to change 
in this game because it seems like all the bosses are probably exactly the same so i wonder if like because this was originally a vertical castle and whoa that mini wiggler is like glitching out oh no it's going the wrong way ah oh, crud and we're back. So yeah, we just sort of had to like wait for the Wiggler to despawn and respawn another one because I need the Wiggler to go to the right side. That way I can bounce off it and uh, get the final star coin. But um, yeah, as I was saying, like I would like to know how much they were actually able to change. Like if they were able to make completely new levels over other existing levels or if they sort of had to follow the same format of the original game because like they weren't allowed to change that much i.e. this being a uh, vertical climbing castle originally so they had to make it a vertical climbing castle in this game or if like it was a normal castle and they made it a vertical climbing castle because it seems like everything else in the overworld is exactly the same including you know secret exit locations ghost house and stuff like that so it makes me think that they couldn't change that because they were like hard-coded into the game or something but whatever not a huge deal let's move on to dory den oh man oh good yeah this level looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun i sure do love sitting on the back of dory and you know going through auto scrolling levels we you know i shouldn't be like too overly critical on this level considering i just started it it could be a really fun level but uh typically speaking Auto scrollers are awful all the time. No exceptions. I think there's maybe been like one instance of a fun auto scrolling level ever. And I can't even name it off the top of my head, so it must not have been that good. <laughs> uh, I just. I don't think anyone really likes auto scrollers. Like, I understand they need to exist. Because, like, I mean, you can do certain cool gimmicks within your auto scrolling levels. But, uh, I just think those gimmicks sort of result in a less fun player experience. And that's just not good, in my opinion. You know, I'm also very impatient, so that might be the reason why I don't particularly like auto-scrollers. I don't know, man. That's just sort of always been my, uh, I guess mantra for gaming is... I hate sort of waiting around and moving slowly in games. It's just not fun for me. And as a result, like, I cannot play turn-based RPGs for any amount of time at all just because I personally do not find them enjoyable at all. Like, they're just super boring to me. Even, like, the best turn-based RPGs I just cannot get into. Um, that's sort of the reason why, like... I'm not crazy on the whole Pokemon franchise. Like, a lot of people ask me to play Pokemon all the time, and I'm just like, I know if I do, I'll get bored because those type of games just never capture me. Um, and, like, I thought action RPGs were pretty interesting from playing, like, Xenoblade Chronicles X, but uh, I tried to get into Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and, oh, no, I need to get that spring. Ah, crud. All right, let's try this one more time. This time we'll actually, you know, be prepared to jump off that Koopa because I do need this spring to grab, uh, yeah, the second star coin over here. As I was saying, though, yeah, I did try to get into, like, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I even, like, streamed myself playing the first, um, what, like, three or so hours of it. But, uh, I'll be honest, I played a couple hours after that and I just could not really get into it anymore. It's just not my cup of tea, I guess. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad game, it's just, for me, it didn't really capture my interest long enough to keep me enthralled and, you know, entice me to play through the rest of the 80 plus hours of that game. Which, um, kind of a shame, because I really wanted to like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Like, I played it for much longer than I normally would a game that I wasn't really enjoying. Uh, just to, like, try and get to a point where it was like, yeah, you know, this is a lot of fun, but it never really got there for me. It got close a couple of times, but there was always just something that would stop it from, like, reaching that point of 
enjoying it enough to want to keep playing. So I never really hit that point with uh, Xenoblade 2, which, eh, whatever. I guess it's not for me. I'm glad there's people out there that are enjoying it, though, because it does seem like it's an all right game. And maybe the story gets more interesting as you go on. Like, I, I think I've logged close to, I want to say, 10 hours in the game. But even then, like... The story wasn't really capturing my interest as much as, um, you know, the other two Xenoblade games. Because even Xenoblade 1, I only played a couple hours of that. But, um, the story was pretty interesting right off the bat. And I was, like, kind of into it. It's just that I never actually got around to finishing the game. I do plan on going back to it at some point. Just, um, yeah, not anytime soon. Also, bro, can you come over here and blow up these freaking stone blocks, my man? Please! I need you to get the star coin, dude. Hello. Please, come over here. There you go. Okay, you know what? That was too much. But whatever. At least you broke open the way for me. And now I can freaking get the star coin. <laughs> oh, jeez. I feel like that took way too long. I'm not sure if there's like a way that you can bait those guys over to you easier. But, uh, whatever, man. We got the star coin. Now we just gotta navigate through this mess and onslaught of these guys but um i do have a question for you guys uh so going forward with like the rest of this series since doing one world of video actually takes around you know 30 plus minutes i am curious because i think most of you guys have gone back to school already like i want to say winter break is probably over also how did i get hit there i guess like mario's boot touched like the edge picks of that bomb but whatever um so, yeah, going forward in the future, I'm curious if you guys want to see, like, still one world per video, or if you'd like me to make the videos a little bit shorter and do, like, uh, a world, or half a world, rather, per video. That way, you know, we get two 15-ish minute videos rather than, like, one 30-minute video going forward, since, I mean, that'll probably just make it a little bit quicker for me to record each video. Um... But either way, I guess for me, it doesn't really matter. I'm just, like, trying to figure out what would be better for you guys, since you probably don't have as much free time as you did over winter break to watch videos. At least that's my thinking. I could be completely off, but hey, I mean, I'm sure you guys will let me know. And wow, that shell sort of, like, killed all of those Koopas for me. Thanks, buddy. All right, I think the final star coin is down this pipe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, this looks right. Oh, right. Okay. We have to deal with one of these guys again. Thankfully, their bombs sort of just, like, break all the blocks at once. All right, come on. We can grab this quick. There we go. Not even close, buddy. Oh, wait. No. Okay. That was actually really, really close at the end. I thought for sure Mario's foot was going to, uh, poke that bomb. Thankfully, he didn't, so that's good for us, at least. Um... Now we just got to get through here. I got to say, these enemy placements, pretty tough, man. Pretty tough, actually. I just hate these guys, so it's not even that they're tough. I'm just kind of dumb and also ran right into that one. Thankfully, I got my good old mushroom behind me. There we go. All right, come on, Mario, please. We got it. I think we're good. Is that it? I think that's it for this level. Thank goodness, man. That was uh something else. You know, that actually was a pretty long level actually which i mean is not a bad thing i was just uh kind of surprised since i mean as i said in like the previous two videos it seems like all the levels thus far besides that one have been relatively short all right um i think we have two more levels left with the secret exit in the ghost house and then the castle so we're getting there man we're getting there I forgot how extensive World 3 was compared to, like, World 1 and 2. It's really, like, the first world that sort of has a bunch of stuff going on in it. And I think they only get sort of longer from here on out, so... Oh, jeez. Alright, let's just try and get through this level as quickly as we can. And hello, first star coin. I'll take that. Um, dang, it's actually kind of a mishmash of, like... A bunch of other themes that we've seen thus far. We got the honeycombs, the poison water. It's pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Now, if we can just get, like, Dory and, like, some Wigglers in here, we'll be good to go. Um, oh, okay. 
So let's just. Uh, oh, I'm an idiot. Okay. I see what's going on here. Let's uh, let's try that again and see you later, Goomba. You idiot. Nice job, dude. All right. Uh oh, crud. Wait. Um, here, Spring, please come with me. I need you quick. Are you jump? Okay, good. Yeah. Wow. I had basically one shot at that. So, kind of glad that I made it. Jeez. All right. Um, I think we're good to go then. We just got to worry about one more star coin and uh. I think that one is towards like the very end of this level. So assuming we don't do anything, how in the world did that even work? I thought for sure I was gonna take damage there. I'm not complaining, but uh, it seems kind of weird. All right, assuming we don't do anything stupid, uh, we should be fine going through here. I'll grab that one up and no. Okay, I thought the star coin was gonna be over here. My mistaken. Whoa, there's a little bit of slowdown. Apparently, two wigglers is enough to like break the game. Who would have thought, man? Who would have thought? Oh no, here is where the next star coin is. All right, I think this one's a little bit tricky. So what you want to do is uh, hit that, and not do that. All right, let's try this again. Hit the switch and yeah, stay on the honeycombs. That way you can quickly climb around. And now we just gotta. Climb these freaking red bricks and BAM! There we go! Yeah, the timing is very strict on that, so just be as quick as you possibly can, and you should be able to get it. Alright. Done. Good. <laughs> I'll be honest, that took like a couple tries to get that final star coin. It was not fun. Now let's enter our very first ghost house. Ooh, scary. Oh, and real quick, uh, shout out to whoever left the comment on the previous video letting me know that, like, you can press the L or R buttons to make the intro screens to each level go by faster. My gosh, that's probably going to save me so much time over the course of this LP because I totally didn't know about that. And, uh, yeah, it works wonders, man. Um, all right, you need to come over here, actually, since I think... Uh, there's a door hiding behind you, so come on, dude, just get over here a little bit more. All right, that sh should be good. Now, hopefully, I can just sneak around you, and yeah, there we go. I think the first star coin is in this area. Um, these blocks, man, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't like jumping on them. They're kind of weird, too, since, um, I think if you hit the sides of them... They, like, bounce all over the place, at least that's what it seemed like from, um, the star coin, like, guide that I was reading. So, I'm gonna be a little bit careful jumping near those, since, like, that can definitely screw you up. Also, wait. What is this music from? Is this from... I think it might be a remix of some music in... Mario 64? I want oh see there it goes yeah wow those bounce around a lot that's actually kind of kind of crazy um but yeah no I think this music is from Mario 64 like the uh haunted mansion level that you find outside in the back area of Peach's castle I think it might be a remix of that at least that's what it sounds like to me I might be wrong on that uh either way um, the next star coin is actually a little bit tricky. Actually, both the second and third star coin are kind of like same in terms of like difficulty. So what you want to do is um hit that switch, then quickly jump across these things. What you want to do is oh no 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 come on get up there quick no we can uh oh uh oh okay well that really wasn't intentional but um I guess we can grab the third star coin and go to the secret exit because. Yeah, that's actually how you get to the secret exit. You ride those blocks upward, and, uh, that's that. So, hey, we did it. I wasn't really planning on doing the secret exit first, but, uh, I guess that works. And now we can just go and grab the normal exit and the second star coin. 
All right, let's try and do this a little bit quicker. That way, you know, we can actually grab this star coin and get out of here before those things retract into the ceiling. Jeez. Um, oh, gee, I wonder. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> they did a pretty bad job at disguising that block there, although they probably wanted you to hit that one. I'm actually really glad I have the hammer suit because uh, being able to kill the dry bones and ghosts pretty useful in a ghost house as you can imagine all right i think yeah i think that is that for this level so not too hard man not at all i'm not even gonna bother with that like swinging block i really don't care about the flagpoles or anything like that i just want to finish this level and make my way to the castle baby i don't think we're gonna have a custom boss fight but uh i mean i can still cross my fingers and hope man I think the boss of, um, World 3 was originally, like, a, a fish boss or something, so... I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. I really, really like the, uh, design of this castle, though. It looks really sick and nice. Great way to end off the world, you know? Dang. All right, I think the first star coin is actually behind that boulder, so... We gotta do a little bit of a hop, and there we go. Good thing my man Mario has got them jumps, dude. He can jump over anything, no problem. So I'm pretty sure all the star coins are pretty easy to find in this level. So I'm not going to spend too much time looking for secrets. And we're just going to, like, keep running through here. And Yeah, Boulder, do my bidding. Destroy those dry bones for me. Oh, well... He sort of fell down the gap and... Okay, that was a little stupid. Okay, what am I doing? Hey, we're fine, baby. We're fine. Not even scared at all, man. I'm just gonna grab this fire flower real quick and uh, we're gonna keep going. We'll be fine. Oh, oh, geez. This uh, looks interesting. All right, let's just carefully stay between these two boulders. Actually, I wonder if you could like intentionally take damage and uh, go behind or in front of like one of the boulders. It might make this section a little bit easier, but uh, I think I'd rather just stay between them actually. I mean, it's relatively safe here, right? Oh, I need that star coin, please. No, uh oh, oh, uh, crud. Oh, you definitely could fall behind. Okay, that was a little sketchy towards the end there. Um. But, you know, we good. We live in. So, whatever. No big deal. Oh, great. It's auto-scrolling. Ah, uh, crud. Um, oh, all right. You know what? Let's just try and get ahead of these, uh, boulders. Because I do not trust the speed of the screen here whatsoever. Okay. All right. We're good now. No, no, we're not good. We're still not good. There's boulders everywhere, man. All right, whatever. You know what? I don't even care. These boulders, I need that star coin. Okay. I'm half expecting that thing to start rolling. Thankfully, it didn't. And, um, wait. Oh, that was it, actually. Hey, that was kind of weird. Like, that was a normal door and not like a boss door. Odd choice, but whatever, man. And it's still the giant fish boss. Hey, what's up, Bertha or whatever this thing is called? Um... Genius. I'm a genius. 200 IQ jumping plays by your boy. At least I killed one of the fish. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, hang on. I wonder if I can damage this guy with the hammer suit while he's swimming below me. Because, I mean, this is one of the few power-ups that actually does sort of uh, go through things. But it doesn't look like it actually affects the boss, unfortunately. Either way, he's dead. We got the key. So, we're done with this world, man. And I think this should automatically send us to world four now. At least that makes sense since there's like no other way to access it besides maybe the cannons. Oh, good. The overworld of this world lags too. Fantastic. Anyways, I think that's where I'm going to end off this video. So if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. Once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.